Welcome back to another YouTube Tuesday. My name is Derek, and today we're going to be going over another YouTube channel that was recommended by one of you guys. And that channel is Electronics Repair School. So let's get into the video. The YouTube channel Electronics Repair School is based out of the UK has over 400,000 subscribers with over 1,200 videos uploaded, accumulating over 57 million views across his videos. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at one of his more recent uploads so that you can get an idea as to why he was recommended and why you should definitely check him out. Let's get into his video. Hello, so we are back and this time, we have a MacBook to repair, MacBook Air. Can you fix a MacBook? What do you think? I will say, let's test it. I don't know too much about this laptop. Uh, it's coming from a computer business, but I have no info. So let's see what it's doing. I haven't tested, so I don't know nothing about this laptop. A power meter. So plug in the charger and the meter, it is coming on. 5 volts and nearly no current. And the other port, 5 volts and nearly no current. So the PD controller is not speaking with the charger. I will say, let's open the laptop and let's have a look inside. And the laptop, it's open. Yeah, that's a Having a way to detect what type of current a device is drawing when you plug it in can definitely give you a good idea of where to start. Over time, with experience, you will start to recognize patterns with specific types of faults. So I definitely recommend if you don't have a way to measure what devices are taking as far as their charge, that you get some type of device, whether it's one like this, where it plugs into the end, or where you have a, a base that a bunch of cables can plug into where you could read several different devices at the same time. A nice small motherboard, and it's looking good. I mean, I can't see liquid damage or, you know, like sign like someone actually work here. And also no fingerprints, that's nice. Okay, let's do some checks, yeah? Let me plug the charger. Uh, let's see what do we have here before we are uh, pulling out the schematic. Like I mean, for MacBooks, we can find schematics, so uh, that will not be a problem. I mean, for MacBooks, we can find schematics, so uh, that will not be a problem. So what do we have here? We so what he's doing right now is he's gotten out his multimeter. He still is putting power to the device, and he's got his red probe on the data lines and his black probe on ground, which means he's testing voltage. He's checking to see what type of power is being put through different rails to see if he can detect a problematic area. If you understand the different voltages for different lines, this is an easy way to determine if you have a failure on that particular line on the motherboard. We have zero volts. I'm assuming this capacitor is on the battery, but not sure about that. This one zero. We have a bunch of capacitors here, which I'm not sure what they are doing. I don't know the schematic of this one. But clearly, uh, we have no voltage on the board. Let me take the connector out. So the connector is out. Switching to beeping. Beeping is, he's probably referring to continuity or diode mode. As we'll probably see, he's going to switch it over to where the red probe goes on ground and the black probe goes on the data lines to see if he can find a short. Ground plus, check that, zero. Or if he's just in continuity, you're able to get the same result regardless of the probe that you use because all you're looking for is a connection between ground and the line you're testing. If he was in diode mode looking for a specific readings, he would be switching the probes. This is something what you can check without schematic on like any laptop. Here, here is no short. Okay, probably this is the backlight, I'm assuming. But this capacitor, the plus of the capacitor having zero ohms, is not a good sign. Then I guess in MOSFETs, capacitor, another capacitor, like one ohm. 0 0.9 ohms, 0 0.9. I mean, whatever capacitor I'm checking on this board uh, is short. I will say, uh, let me grab the thermal camera. So capacitors should never be shorted. So capacitor being short definitely is going to cause a dead board. Capacitors, in almost every single circumstance, capacitors have one side that's on a ground plane and the other side is on a data line. If both sides are reading short ground, that means that you typically have a bad capacitor. The most common failed capacitor are ceramic capacitors and they're relatively easy to replace as they tend to hold up during, as they tend to stay in one piece during their removal and replacement. 
Looks like he's about to use a thermal camera, which is a great tool to have when diagnosing shorts because you can inject voltage using your power supply and the component that consumes energy tends to be the faulty component. Doesn't mean it always is unless it's a capacitor that lights up. If a capacitor lights up, it's definitely the problem. If it's an IC that lights up, it could be the problem or it could be something that's downstream of that IC. So let's see what lights up when he puts a thermal camera and a power supply to this motherboard. You want to say Dizzy Pizza? Yeah. <laughs> uh, probably Dizzy Pizza. I mean, this looks like a shorter capacitor. Let me power up the thermal camera. Power supply, we are lowering the voltage. We don't need high voltage to find a short. So the current, let me lower the current before we are understanding with what we are dealing here, because it is important to see what kind of resistance the short has. And you can see that after you come with the current and then you follow the voltage and you can figure it out what kind of resistance you have there. So we need a ground. I'm assuming this is ground. Yeah, it must be ground. Okay, I found a better ground. Then capacitor and we have like 0 0.5 volts. So actually the resistance is not that low. The resistance of the short. What is that? One second. Yeah, that one, that one. What is that? There is a short, you can see? So I believe there is some capacitor. Yeah, this one. So actually it's a... Sometimes the capacitors will be discolored. Sometimes they'll have a physical crack in them. Sometimes it's easy to determine whether or not they're faulty by simply looking at them under a microscope. And sometimes it's not that obvious. Sometimes using something like a thermal camera with a power supply is the best way to go in identifying the, the faulty component. Now this one was clear. The only thing that was getting warm was that capacitor. And an easy way to verify this is to remove it, test it, and you can also test the board to see if you still have a short after you remove the capacitor. Now this type of capacitor that he's referring to is a directional capacitor. And what that means is you can't you can't flip them around like you can a ceramic capacitor. And for the most part you can get away with Having a device work if you take away a single capacitor. Capacitors act kind of like mini batteries, storing energy, helping either increase or decrease the current along that line, depending on what is downstream of that circuit, if you need to amplify it or decrease it for the circuit that it's powering. So removing one out of a row typically doesn't change it enough that you're gonna see any issues. So so if he removes this, he should be able to test it to see if that was the only issue. Electrolytic capacitor, I can't believe. Let's be sure that's the problem. Now let's come with some alcohol, perfect. And now we are doing the same with the power supply. So coming with current here. He's testing on another which capacitor. capacitor yeah, that one, you can see. So the first one, the alcohol is getting evaporated, this one. So I believe that capacitor is gone. Now the solution, the solution is very simple, yeah? We are removing the capacitor, 480 degrees. 480 degrees gets it off quick. Let's remove the capacitor. Which is what you want, you want it to come off nice and quick. The legs on these tend to fall off. And the off. capacitor is removed. What do you think about this capacitor? Can we check the capacitor? Yeah, we can. So with the multimeter, check that, check on the screen. You can see the capacitor is shorted. But what about the capacitor place? Is this shorted? No, you can see it's not short now. You can see, no short. So we found a problem. We found a problem. Now, let me cool down the motherboard quickly. Perfect. Plug in the battery. That's one way to cool it down. Just blow on it. The battery is plugged in. Let's plug a charger. Plug in the charger. Okay, that's that's what happened when the, the phone is ringing when you are doing a video. So the laptop is taking like 90. So the laptop um, has like 19 volts, 1.2 amps. And yeah, I have to edit the video. But yeah, it's working fine. Let me shut down the laptop. Perfect. So what do you think about that? Huh? This is a common fault on MacBooks. And uh, I will say probably around like 30-40% of the fault faulty MacBooks are actually capacitors. 
like on this case, I didn't expect to be like an electrolytic capacitor to be faulty. But you know, looks like you know on the on the MacBooks, even the electrolytic capacitor are getting faulty. I was expecting a ceramic capacitor, but yeah, replacing the capacitor maybe on the next video, maybe on the next video. Yeah, it's it's a more delicate operation. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is uh, you don't need a schematic. You don't really need too much knowledge uh, to fix, like how I said, around 30, probably 40% of the MacBooks, which they, 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 that, that's, that's a common fault, right? not only on the MacBooks, like on any like laptop, you will find like a shorter capacitor, especially on uh, liquid damage laptops. The capacitor are the first to die. Easy pizza? Definitely it's an easy pizza. I didn't op even open the schematic, so yeah, we didn't took the board out, so 100% it's a easy pizza. Kind of like a two large, uh, two large pizzas. Well deserved. I will say uh, thank you for watching, you know, like, subscribe if you like the video, and see you on the next one. All right. So, yeah, the you can see how practical it is to have a good understanding of how to do simple diagnostic and, and solving issues like this with the right tools. In this case, power supply, multimeter, thermal camera, and just the knowledge uh, on top of that, having a rework station for removing the capacitor, a decent pair of tweezers, nice quick video. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what to expect. I'm taking a look at his channel. Given that he has over 400,000 subscribers, it's probably a reason, so definitely check him out. If there's a channel that you'd like to recommend, that we take a look at in a future video, leave it in the comments below. As you can tell, I like it when you guys comment. And if you're enjoying this series, let me know. Thanks a ton for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for a repair video.